Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's episode, we're gonna talk about the fundamentals of networking, the things you need to think about before going to your next networking event to ensure that you get the outcome that you're looking for. Stay tuned. Today we're gonna to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is how to work a networking opportunity properly. Now, many people go to networking events on a monthly or even weekly basis, but they go there without having a plan in place, and then often, they're disappointed with the results they get. So I'm gonna share with you the fundamentals of networking. I'm actually gonna break this topic into three parts. The first part today is gonna to be fundamentals. Part two is gonna to be talking about the common mistakes people make when going to networking events. And in the third part, we're gonna talk about what the pre-flight checklist looks like. And then it's actually the list that I follow when I'm going to a networking event. But let's jump right into the fundamentals of what networking is. When we look at networking, there are about 10% of people that love networking opportunities and seem to get a huge amount of value from it. Well, the 90% who either go begrudgingly or they go eager but don't seem to get the results, these people are the people that I'm talking to today. Even though some of this content will put a finer tip on that 10% that love networking events, what I'm talking about is the 90% of people that I work with, people that I go to networking events with, and even people that I observe at networking events. And I'm watching, always surprised, at how many opportunities they're missing. I don't believe they're missing the opportunities intentionally. Instead, what I think is happening is they don't know what to do. They've tried to teach themselves how to do it properly by observing others. Sadly, most of the networking preparation happens behind closed doors for seasoned networkers, and it's not really something that you can observe other people doing. In this episode, we're gonna talk about the 12 fundamentals that you need to know about networking before you come up with your plan. And I'd encourage you to stay through to the end because I have a tool that I'm gonna be discussing and making available at the end. Let's jump right into the first fundamental, which is that everyone there is there for the same reason which is they're looking to establish or extend their professional network. You may find yourself feeling uncomfortable when you have to go to a networking event, but keep in mind that everyone that walks in that room is there for the exact same reason and understands why others are there. The reason they've all decided to convene in the same location is to connect with one another. Any story that you may have in your head about making people uncomfortable by walking up to them or going up to strangers and striking a conversation, trust me when I tell you that most people feel that way and are actually relieved when somebody comes up and talks with them. Number two, and by far the most important fundamental on this list, so much so, I want you to write it down. You can create more connections and opportunities in 30 minutes networking in a great location than you could in three months emailing people, phoning people, and trying to get connections. There is nothing that creates more opportunities in so short a time as a networking event. Number three, and building on the last point, if you get in the right pond, right? We call it a pond at GoCO. And you can think of it as a watering hole, a networking event, but somewhere where you go to fish out opportunities. If you find yourself in the right pond, the amount of opportunities either in the room or one relationship away from people in the room will absolutely blow your mind. The reason why we attend different networking events is we're looking for that honey hole, that place that is filled with fish. And as I said in the previous point, there has been some occasions where I've gone to an event and I cannot believe my luck and how many qualified prospects and champions are in the room. Number four is you're going to want to have some type of plan that you follow from pre-event to after event. Going to a great event is only one third of the total equation. You have to be prepared ahead of time. You have to execute well in the networking event, and then you have to have great follow-up afterward. And so I'm going to encourage you to start to think through a plan that you're going to have in place to get yourself ready to show up well and to follow up exceptionally. Number five, and this is very important. Networking events are not a place to sell. Let me say that one more time. Networking events are not a place to sell. Networking events are a place where you start a relationship. You start a conversation, and if that conversation goes well, then you continue to build on it after the event. It might be the next day, it might be the next week, it might be later on. But a huge mistake people make when they go to a networking event is having the expectation that they're gonna go close a bunch of clients that day. That should never happen. And if it is happening, you're probably rushing the process 
process. And if you think that that's your one up to bat in order to get an opportunity, you're gonna have a huge amount of anxiety to make sure that you hit the ball well. The sixth fundamental of networking is to give each person just enough time and no more. If you're going to an event and you're talking to somebody for 10 or 15 or 20 minutes and it's only a one hour event, you're making a huge mistake. This is speed dating. If you're spending 15 or 20 minutes with the same person, number one, you're trying to sell them, or number two, you are hiding from other people and using this conversation as an excuse of why not to talk to others. The sweet spot is three minutes with each individual person. If you're enjoying the conversation, conversation, ask them for a card and give them a card and tell them you'll follow up to have coffee or lunch with them down the road and then move on to the next person. Number seven is remembering that only 10% of the people in the room are comfortable and happy to be there, which means that 90% are there begrudgingly or they're there because they think they have to be there or they're there for a variety of reasons, none of which are their own choice. What you can do is go up to the people that look most uncomfortable and say to them, hi, how are you? I'm Chris. They will introduce themselves, which is an easy thing for most people to do. And then you say something along the lines of, have you been to this type of event before? You let them answer. And then you say to them, so what brought you to this event tonight? By getting people talking, they'll start to warm up and they'll start to see you as someone who's making them feel more comfortable. This is a great way to start to establish a relationship. And the eighth fundamental is look to connect people with each other. Remember from previous videos that the most important person in business is the person that is well connected. I will go into a cold networking event, which means I don't know anybody, and I will start making connections with the goal of having five new connections within the first 15 minutes. Then what I do is with each new person that I meet after the five, I think of the previous five that I met and who I can introduce them to. And you'll see me starting to walk people across the room, introducing them to each other. Number nine is being the host and the best guests. Being the host is once I've established those initial five relationships, I look to make sure that those five are having a good time and getting value from the event. This would be what a host would do if they didn't have 20, 30, 50, 100, 200 guests that they were trying to manage. I walk around making introductions and making sure that they're having a great event with me playing a very small role in that. I even acknowledge the people working the registration table and other helpers that are in the room because I know how much work it is to try to create a good event for people. On the other side of that coin, I also aim to be the best guest at the event. I often will go up and thank the speaker personally or the talent that's come. I stop and thank and shake the hand of the organizer for having me and putting on a great event. I thank all of the event staff and anyone else that I come across who played a role. I'm surprised at how few people do this. They pay their 25, 50, 100, $500 to go to an event and they think that by paying, that's showing appreciation. Number 10, and this seems like an obvious, but it's important for us to address anyway, is being a market shark means that you have to keep moving. You don't wanna stop and stay in any one place too long. I like to work the registration table by getting my name badge and saying hello to the people. I go to the bar where people tend to cluster to get drinks. I will then work my way from corner to corner to corner to corner to center. And then once I'm done, bar, Corner, 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 center. There is no place in the networking event that I spend more than three to five minutes in. I'm constantly on the move. The 11th fundamental, probably the part that most people mess up, aside from not having a plan before they go to the event, is not doing follow-up properly. Remember that a networking event is not a chance for you to sell. It's a chance for you to establish relationships and start initial conversations. If those conversations go well and you've gotten a card or you've given a card, but I want you to get a card so that you can initiate the follow-up, then you have to follow up. It's not like dating in grade eight where you're wondering, geez, do I wait three days, five days before I let her know I like her? With a networking event, you follow up the next business day. If it's on a Friday or Saturday, it would be the Monday. Any other day from Sunday through Thursday, it's the following business day. Always schedule time right after the networking event where you can do a bit of a debrief with yourself. I tend to do this in the car if it's a night event. Or if it's during the day, I will walk back to the car and I will sit down and I will debrief to myself how that event went. 
How was it organized? What quality of people were in the room? Who did I meet? Who do I need to follow up with? And what other opportunities or outcomes did I identify by being in the event? And number 12 is my bathroom trick. This is something I normally only share with clients, but I wanna share with you today because it works so very well. What I do when I am on a mission at a networking event is I collect business cards. I'm happy to give out cards and I always make sure that I have them with me, but it is more important for me to get a card than to give a card. I want the onus to be on me to do the follow-up. I don't wanna wait for them to do it because I know people are not great at time management and I may get lost in the flow of things that they have to do. What I do is every good business card, i.e. somebody that I wanna follow up with, I take that card and I put it in my right pocket. If it's somebody that I meet that is a grade one clinger or somebody that I know I don't wanna do business with, I take their card and I put it in my left pocket. After I've collected 10 cards, I go to the bathroom and I go into a stall, I close the door and I lock it. I take out my pen and I write something interesting that came up in the conversation on the back of each person's business card. So-and-so's son is in hockey, plays midget. So-and-so's daughter is going to Columbia next fall. So-and-so is about to write one of their compliance exams. So-and-so is in the process of getting a divorce. I do this because it's part of my relationship building with new contacts. I don't want to just know them in business. I want to know who they are overall because I'm determining what the opportunity is for me, what the opportunity is I can present to them. And I'm thinking through who I can connect them with that they could bring value to and that they could derive value from. This is part of my process as I'm out establishing and developing a network. Cards that find themselves in my left pocket, I wait till I get home, those get tossed. Now here's a little bonus that I'm gonna offer those of you that watch the entire video. I'm gonna have in the description below a way for you to download these 12 components for you to follow as you are starting to do more networking events with an intentional way. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, giving it a thumbs up, and click the little bell so that you know when these videos are being released. Thanks again and we'll see you next time. things you need to think about before you go to your next next work the things you need to think about about to ugh. that should those 10 fent but let's jump mm.